relationships as a result of a two-way street. Um, I have a factory in China called, uh, I don't own it, it's my factory called New Pungaline. New Pungaline has been making shoes for Fortune Footwear for 23 years, 100,000 there a month. It's unheard of. The guys like my age, you know, go back 25 years, and I've been making shoes for Victoria's Secret for 23 years at New Pungaline. Imagine the, the, the factory knows the customer, the customer knows the factory. How do you get there? In a way, I don't really make the shoes, right? Like I show you all the shoes and I can be a really good shoe salesman. I make marriages. I, 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 I'm a matchmaker. That's what I am. And that's what you want. Whether you're in the shoe business or in any sort of international import business, you're a matchmaker. You're going to go out to the customer and you say to the customer, okay, tell me about what you want. What are the prices you want? I want to be expensive. Uh, what are the quantities you can buy? What are your delivery requirements? What are your quality requirements? What are your social compliance requirements? What are your testing requirements? And they'll tell me all that. And I'll go, like the computer. And I'll go, ching sa And that's the name of the factory that I want to match with the customer. So now I have ching sa with Steve Mack. And then it's got to start to work. The relationship has to work. Okay? And then sometimes then I become, instead of the matchmaker, then I become the marriage master. <laughs> because Steve Madden complains about Chun Sun Fung. Oh no, Chun Sun Fung, they're okay, they're okay. And Chun Sun Fung's complaining about Steve Madden. Oh no, they're okay, they're okay. And I try and keep that relationship together. I try and get them, you know, I just, you know, you try and, it's just like any relationship. It's like a personal relationship. It's the same exact thing. You gotta work on it. You can't give up and go to the next factory or get to the next customer. You gotta keep working on it because you're gonna get to an optimal point where you got both guys 23 years and everyone can do everything with their eyes closed and then you start to make money. Okay, so, you know, and, and you can't just be customer driven. Like, yeah, Victoria, you get my customer. Like, if, if my factory goes wrong, I gotta get them. I gotta get them. If my customer goes wrong by my factory, let's say they changed the color three weeks before production, I can't tell the factory, you know, do it. And if you're wrong, if you're late, you're going to be penalized. I tell the customer you can't do that. It's a two-way street. I can't just protect the customer. I must protect the supplier and let the supplier know that I got their back and let the customer know I got their back. It's really like a marriage council, you know, but I, I've been pretty good at it, you know, for 23 years. And uh, I have a lot of long-term relationships that way. You've got to work on that. And, uh, you know, well, I've been married, it's funny, for 23 years. And, and you know, again, when you're in business and you're not under a lot of pressure, you have great relationships at home. Whether it's with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, you know, you know your kids, like, that will allow you to handle the pressure. It's out there, it's a lot of pressure out there, guys. It's a tough thing. If I come home to my wife and my family, it, 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 it relieves it, you know, and it's a great distraction. So that's, that's another relationship you definitely want to work with. Personal principles apply to business. Rejection doesn't mean you're off the team. Yeah, I'm going to move on. I play football. I look like I play football, right? I don't look like I'm in the fashion business, right? So I remember playing football. I was on the right hand side of the line. I was right tackle, and we were like, you know, he's about to score the winning touchdown on the one yard line. And I get down, I get in the huddle, it's walk down, one yard to go. And uh, I get in the huddle, and I'm beating the guy across from me the whole time. I'm beating, pushing him back, pushing him back, pushing him back. I said to get in the huddle, look at the quarterback. I go, Mike, I got this guy beat. Come right behind me. We score. It's over. We win. He looks at me in the huddle. He goes, and I'm on the right-hand side. I go, come on, come on, right. He looks at me and goes, we're going left. He's going to go the other way. I did. I crossed my arms. I'm not playing. You know, like, I didn't take rejection like I'm not going to be on the team. you got to be mature about it. you got to take it. you got to understand who your leaders are. You can make your suggestions. They must hear your suggestions. But if your leader, who supposedly should be your leader for a reason, says your captain, the military will tell you that all the time, right? You know, just, you know, you got to get with it. Let me turn it to a business of mine. I had a designer who were over in Asia, and we were talking to customers. She made a suggestion. 
oh, let's put, uh, you know, let's make the heel purple. And we all kind of snickered at her. She crossed her arms. She never said a thing in the next two hours. She became ineffective in a meeting. You know, you've got to be able to raise your hand, ask a question, make a comment, be wrong, and then pick that darn hand up again. Because, you know, anybody can make a suggestion in the box. That's what everyone's about. It's the one that comes out of the box. You might make no hand that wrong, but it's that suggestion that comes out of the box that's where the brilliance is, and that's where the money is. So just, you know, even when you're in school, you know, I don't know if the professor would kill me here, but, you know, you know, you know, just don't listen to what they say, write it all down, regurgitate it on a test or an exam, and get a good grade and think you learned something. You know, you gotta, you gotta question them. You know, a, a student I was talking to before it said to me, they're gonna, you know, go out in the work environment and then go to grad school. That's a great idea. Because then you question them. You know, because you'll be out there and you'll say. So, um, for sure, for sure, uh, rejection doesn't mean you're off the team. Again, uh, be around those who not like you. Again, a principal should apply right now. Um, when I was a kid, my mother was a teacher. I went to Mexico. I lived in Mexico for, you know, 30 days in some dry town, cactus salad, and it, it was horrible. No one spoke English. I was the only white kid there. But when I got a job and I went to China, and in 1988, I'd walk out of the hotel and I'm 6'3", 250, white guy. They never even saw an American back then. So I'm walking, they're all just like, following me. You know, just following me around everywhere, like 30 of them. I was okay with it. I was comfortable. I was comfortable being in a surrounding that not everybody looked like me, sounded like me, talked like me, and think like me. When you're here in the school, find people who are not like you. You know, you guys come to school here like with um, people from your high school, or you came here solo. Solo? That's great. You gotta meet new people. You can't come to here with eight friends from yours from high school and just hang out with them. You're not gonna grow. You gotta grow. You gotta meet new people, you gotta meet different people, and you gotta grow. Um, one day, you're gonna go to work, and you're gonna get put in a room with somebody from Sudan, somebody from Vietnam, somebody from Greece, gay, straight, 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, you're gonna be on that team, and some of your boss is gonna go, you guys got to produce. And now you got to be comfortable with those people. So start practicing that now. Start getting comfortable with those who are not like you. And learn from that. That's what, that's what the world's about. I mean, the international program you guys here have here, that's amazing. You know, that, that's going to be a great way for you to learn uh, how to you know, be around others who aren't like you. Pick and stick with the winners. 30% of my success. I was 20, 25 years old, out 